This video is sponsored by Squarespace. As the years have gone by, my camera bag and my everyday carry has evolved, but there's always been one running theme throughout my decision making when picking my gear and heading outside. And that is just having as little faff as possible. I want a minimal setup that allows me to focus on actually taking photos and nothing else. I would say over the last year, I have landed on a pretty straightforward but effective street photography setup that works perfectly for me. If you haven't seen my face before, Hello, my name is Mike and I shoot mostly in London. I have been trying to capture the joys of candid life for about five years. I like to take as many photos as possible when I'm out. I walk at least 20K steps, preferably more, just so I know I've been around and I've seen as much as possible. I cap myself at three coffees, maybe four, depending on how long I'm out. And an almond croissant is quite essential for a good day of street. Probably the main reason you're watching this video, what camera bag am I actually using? I wanna preface this by saying, I think most camera bags are pretty ugly and complicated and I wish I didn't have to use a camera bag, that's how I feel about them. And as soon as you have one bag, you will find a reason to want another one, just like camera gear. So the perfect camera bag doesn't exist, but hopefully we can get pretty close. Over the years, I've gone from having a full-blown backpack with multiple cameras and lenses to a pretty simple shoulder sling just for the essentials. And the shoulder sling I've landed on is this nine liter Venture Sling from Bellroy. Before the Venture Sling from Bellroy, I was using the Peak Design 10 liter sling, but that camera bag feels too much like a hard shell and isn't actually that comfortable. Now I did buy it thinking I would want to carry more cameras with me, maybe when I'm filming YouTube videos, for example, but it just isn't comfortable and I wanted to slim it down a little bit better and actually have a bag that feels more like a bag and not like a rock hard shell. So, so the Peak Design Sling was okay. I, I kind of recommend it, but I much prefer the Bellroy Venture Sling. I don't want to turn this into a full blown camera bag review, but from the last couple of months using this Bellroy bag, it's almost perfect. I'll share everything that goes inside in just a moment, but for me, the size is spot on. I will say that there is only a minor difference between the nine liter and the 10 liter version of this bag. The 10 liter version has more of a padded shoulder strap and dividers inside the bag, whereas the nine liter has a more slimmed down shoulder strap and no dividers in the bag. I didn't even know this until JP, a good friend and fellow street photographer, he has the 10 liter version and we thought we had the exact same bag and then we realized there was like subtle differences. So nine liter, 10 liter, Bellroy Venture Sling, whatever size you wanna go for. Even the six liter, I think they do a six liter version, I would recommend it depending on what you're carrying. But for me, it's the nicest shoulder sling I've had ever. Talking about what's in the camera bag now, if you've watched my channel over the last few months, you will know I've been using the Leica Q2 most of the time. I love how it feels to use, the image quality, and obviously the little red dot means I'm better than everyone else. The 28 millimeter lens is probably the main reason you would pick this camera up. It does feel more like a 26 millimeter though, but Either way, I like that wider focal length. I use the Q2 probably 80% of the time, and then 20% of the time, the good old trustworthy Fujifilm X100V, another fixed lens camera, which is a callback to what I mentioned earlier. I just want camera gear that's as little faff as possible. I'm sure you've heard all the benefits of a fixed lens camera, but I don't wanna to have to decide on a lens and carry multiple lenses. I just wanna make one decision in the morning, pick the camera up, and then that's it for the day. So whether I decide on the Q2 with the 28 millimeter or the Fujifilm X100V and the 35 millimeter, those wider focal lengths kind of suit the things I like shooting. If I want to film a POV for a YouTube video, I can easily pop the GoPro and magnetic necklace mount in here too. Most of the time I have the GoPro on me anyway. It doesn't take much extra room in the bag and you never know what I might end up filming. I've also been using these little DJI mics recently, which are brilliant. Again, this isn't street photography related, but if I do film a street photography video, like I did recently where I interviewed other photographers, I can just carry these little mics around with me, connect it to my phone and have top-notch audio. As you can tell from my fixed lens camera, GoPro, audio setup, gone are the days of having multiple camera lenses, bodies, bigger microphones. I just want things to be convenient. And it kind of reminds me of a video game. You know, if your inventory is too full, you can't move as fast. Keeping it lightweight keeps things fun. We all know that once you've decided on your essential gear, along comes the accessories. So whether I use the Leica Q2 or Fujifilm X100V, I need to bring batteries with me. If the GoPro also comes with me, most of the time it does, 
that also needs batteries. Obviously you've noticed I'm shooting digital so a couple more SD cards also joins the party. I have been out too many times and haven't realised I don't have an SD card in my camera until it's too late. So I do carry multiple 128GB SD cards. The Leica Q2 files are bigger so I can get to about a thousand photos and then I need to swap up my SD card. Especially if the light is really good or if there's an event on, I probably do go into my second SD card. Either way, I don't want the restriction or limitation knowing that I could fill an SD card up. So a lot of you might be thinking multiple SD cards is a bit overkill, but for the weight and the space that it takes up, I don't care. I want to make sure I have memory and space. I don't want any restrictions on the things I'm shooting. Another accessory that isn't essential by any means whatsoever, but something I've found very helpful is a pen and a small notebook. Over the recent years, I have personally been making a bigger effort towards pen and paper in general. When I'm at my desk, I have a notebook for random thoughts, ideas, to-do lists, and it has helped me with my creativity and my memory to be specific. But this little notebook specifically is for street notes, I like to call it. Maybe someone recommends a photo book, maybe someone recommends a podcast, or I just have a thought. It's nice to be able to write it down in here and not have to pull my phone out. I mainly use this on the train, to be fair. My journey into London is about 40 minutes, so if I can write down any thoughts or just whatever, brain dump into this, instead of scrolling on my phone, I prefer to do so. I briefly mentioned podcasts, and that's where the AirPods come into play. Now, I don't use the AirPods while I'm shooting. I like to be able to hear my surroundings, but again, traveling on the train, etc. AirPods are pretty convenient, nice and small, no faff. Before we talk about the miscellaneous items, the bits and bobs that I go in my bag, or as some people might call them, the essentials, I wanna talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I have been using Squarespace for years to host my portfolio. It's been my go-to platform to showcase my photography in a professional way that is really simple and straightforward to manage. I have been selling digital products on my site for a few years now, for example, my Lightroom presets, but soon I will be selling my first physical product, which will be my new street photography book. Keep an eye out for that. Pre-orders will go out very soon. That will all be managed and organized on Squarespace. Squarespace's integrated email marketing tools have been game changer for me in building and connecting with my audience via my newsletter, The Focal Point. I have been using Squarespace even before they became sponsors of this channel, and I can honestly say I can't recommend them enough. Whether you need a place for your photography, running a business, or starting a passion project, why not at least start a free trial and see what you think. After that, when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mike Chudley to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Talking about miscellaneous items now, what are the little bits and bobs I like to keep with me? Lens cloth, plasters, and lip balm. I mean, pretty self-explanatory. I will say, however, that the plasters are pretty essential. Not because you need them every time you go out, but just for that one random thing that happens where you do actually need a plaster. With that being said, you shouldn't end up with blisters because you will be making smart choices about your shoes. I know we all have different shoe preferences and foot shapes, but I highly recommend Vans, especially the Comfy Cush sole version of Vans. That piece of information is important. I don't know what it is, but something about the sole. I can walk 20, 30, 40K steps and my feet are good to go. You could use running shoes or hiking shoes. They are obvious answers for comfy footwear. But I also wanna wear stuff that I like the look of and Vans are pretty casual and go with most things. So any Vans with these comfy cush soles have been my go-to this year. I posted a little story this morning asking for any questions about this video I'm making now. And someone sent me a pretty good question. What small addition to your carry has improved your shooting experience the most? I have found that this year specifically, my quantity of images per session is much higher. And there's a weird feeling that lingers when you are limited to SD space or camera battery life. I don't want to hesitate or turn my camera off every two minutes or even worry about the restrictions of SD card space and battery life. So just, it's a simple answer really, but just having an unlimited amount of space essentially and way more batteries than you need just eliminates that weird subconscious feeling of not shooting because you don't think you can. I want to focus on looking and seeing and just being observant and having my camera ready at all times. I don't want to have to faff around with memory card space and batteries or worrying about those things. I know a lot of people watching might just go out with one battery or one SD card, but I just, I don't want to take that risk anymore. 
I do want to throw out there another suggestion for a sling. This is a long weekend sling. It can only hold one camera and my Leica Q2 doesn't fit in here, but my X100V does. So if I'm heading into town to get coffee and I'm only going to be shooting for 20 minutes, a smaller sling like this is pretty useful. But everything else I've mentioned in this video is for a full day of, you know, eight, nine hours of street photography. If you've enjoyed this street photography, camera gear, bag, carry, breakdown video, and you want to get more involved, then please feel free to sign up to the Focal Point. It is a weekly or bi-weekly, depending on how productive I am, email, newsletter about the world of photography, ideas I have, photo books I've bought, work from the community I think is worth sharing, anything about photography that I think is good, I will probably share in the Focal Point email newsletter. I will also be sharing a pre-order link to buy my new book over on the Focal Point e email newsletter first. So if you signed up to that, you will get a link to pre-order before I share it everywhere else. Road to 100K, we're so close now. And um, yeah, that's it. I'll see you next week. Peace.